this video, I'm going to be talking about how to do a free body diagram and how you know when to include each of the different forces and each of the different scenarios. So let's take a look at this woman being pulled in a sled first. So we want to make sure that we concentrate on a specific thing for each of the pictures. You could draw a force diagram um, on the man pulling or on the woman. Um, or on the sled. So we're going to call it the woman sled system. So you want to make sure we're focused on a particular thing before you get started. Now we have a few different forces in this case. I would say the first one we typically are going to go with is the force of gravity pulling straight down towards the center of the earth. Okay, that one you're basically going to include every single time unless you're talking about um, some objects in space. Um, in that case, you would have a force of gravity towards the masses that are next to it. But I'd say in most regular cases, you basically just have a force of gravity straight down because of the pull from the Earth. Now, technically, the way the force of gravity works is it is the center of gravity, which is basically like the center of the system being pulled towards the center of gravity of the other object. But for pretty much all diagrams, you can pretty much say it's straight down and that's going to work for you. The second thing is because the sled and a woman system is being supported by a surface, that surface holds it up and counteracts the force of gravity. We call that the normal force, Fn. Now, normal actually means perpendicular. So I would normally define that as a perpendicular support force. So how are you going to know that's there? If it's sitting on or against another surface, it's pretty safe to assume that there's going to be a force pushing up perpendicular to it. Um, for our third force, we have a rope tugging the system. Okay, anytime it's something along the lines of a rope or chain or string, we call that FT, the force of tension. Um, and that is always some kind of pull. And then I'll say from a rope like object. Okay, so something along the lines of a rope, a string, a chain, something that when you cause it stress, it stretches out and then there's tension in it. Um, and then the third one is, assuming that the entire system is sliding to the left, then we have a force opposing it. And then that's, we're going to call FFK, the force of friction, and then specifically kinetic. So we'll call that kinetic friction. And this is something that always opposes a slide. So anytime something is sliding because of the irregularities in the surface, no matter how smooth something is, there are slight irregularities that may be invisible to the eye that are going to basically be scraping and pushing up against the thing that's sliding across. It always opposes the slide, so it's in the exact opposite direction that the thing is moving. Okay, to recap this one, there are four different forces there. We have force of gravity, which is always straight down. If there's any sort of mass, if something is on a surface, we have a force perpendicular pushing it and supporting it. And then if there's something pulling it that's like a string or a rope, we have that force of tension. And if something is sliding in any which way, in the exact opposite direction, we have the force of kinetic friction opposing that slide. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second one over here. Um, for the second one, we're just gonna focus on this mass over here, this orange box. And we're going to take our first rule. We're going to take the force of gravity straight down. So although something is on an angled surface, the gravity isn't going to pull on an angle. And then because it is sitting on a surface, we're going to go with the normal force. Remember, the normal force is perpendicular. So this one is actually angled because to make a 90 degree angle with this ramp, we're going to have to make sure that we sort of angle our vector a little bit. And then we have a person pushing it. That one is going to be a little bit of a new one. And if they're pushing it, then their force is directed this way. We're going to call that FA, an applied force. Okay. Since I don't have too much room over here, I'll write it in a little note over here. So FA, I would call it some sort of direct push or pull. So that one is kind of like a general one where if you have a thing pushing or pulling it, that isn't necessarily a force of tension. We can call that an applied force. And then um, if it's sliding up the ramp, remember the 
force of kinetic friction goes opposite of the direction that the object is going, assuming that it's sliding on the surface. Okay, now going to our third one, we have a kangaroo jumping up in the air. And a lot of times people would think of putting an applied force upwards, but forces have to be applied by another object. For example, force of gravity is by the earth, force of tension is by the rope, the normal force is by the surface, the force of friction is also by the surface, the irregularities in that surface. Okay, so for this one, it would be considered in, whoops, I left my eraser on. Um, for this one, it would just be force of gravity. So you have to be careful when objects are moving a certain direction that it doesn't necessarily mean that there is a force being applied in that direction. If a kangaroo jumps up, did they probably apply a force on the surface? Of course they did. But then as soon as they're um, in the airborne or in the airborne position over here, then we just have the force of gravity pulling straight down. That would be considered something that's in free fall, only having the influence of gravity. All right, now taking a look at our last one. Um, we are going to take the person from the center, give them a force of gravity straight down towards the center of the earth. And then this one has in sort of an interesting case because they're standing on the ground. So the ground is supporting them with that normal force perpendicular surface. But then additionally, he's leaning against the wall this way. So this one is pushing out perpendicularly to um, support his back as well. So we have two normal forces. And then the third one I'm going to add is um, on his foot over here. So we actually have another type of friction. Okay. Now, if you think about the forces, the person is at rest. Therefore, that means all the forces should be canceling out and the net force is zero. This Fn over here, the vertical one upwards is canceling out this Fg. And then there's an Fn pushing him to the right. And if he's not moving or accelerating to the right, there must be a force to the left, um, which there is. We're going to call that F. F S, the force of friction static, um, more commonly known as static friction. Okay, this is uh, for something that's trying, or we'll say opposing, and it's something that's trying to slide. Okay, so it actually has the same kind of effect that kinetic friction is kinetic just means in motion so something when something is actually sliding it's pushing back in the exact opposite direction this one is when something is trying to slide the foot is trying to slide to the right and it is not that means that the um, rubber on the sole of his shoe and the surface are interacting with each other and pushing back to the left we call that the force of static friction Okay, keep in mind all things that are static and not moving don't necessarily have static friction, but a car parked on a hill or a person leaning against the wall with their foot pressing on the ground, those have static friction because it's something that's trying to slide. So ask yourself, is it trying to slide? And if the answer is yes, then we have the force of static friction. So those are the main forces you're going to see on these free body diagrams. Um, I actually didn't separate them from their environment because normally I guess a free body diagram would be taking the object and separating it from the environment from the picture. Um, but I think in this case, it's helpful to kind of see the environment to realize where the forces are coming from. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand the forces and when to include each one of them. Thank you for watching and listening.